Welcome to Mikos Hardware. Intel Xeon processors gained their popularity when Chinese started to make different chip motherboards which supports these CPUs. Everything started with the Intel LJ1366 platform. After that, Intel LJ2011 or so-called X79 followed, and that was the time when I started to get interested into this subject. I have investigated multiple different X79 platforms, also validated multiple different Xeons, and assembled many computers using these components. Later on, Chinese switched to Intel LJ2011 version 3, or so-called X99. It was about a year ago, and it was when I have started my YouTube channel. Now a year has passed, and X99 or Xeon E5 V3 V4 CPUs are nothing new, and many people are interested and knowledgeable about these CPUs, and maybe it's time to take a look what we can expect from the next Intel platform or so-called Intel LGA 2066 X299. It happened that I have got an Asus X299 motherboard with Intel Core i7 7820X. This is an 8-core 16-thread CPU which can be overclocked. Unfortunately, I have very limited time for playing with this motherboard and with this CPU, that's why I had a big dilemma if I shall make a video about it at all or I shall just skip it. In the end, I have decided to make a gaming comparison. Unfortunately, as I said, I don't have time to make any productivity benchmarks. And in this video, I'm going to compare the CPU against Ryzen 5 5600X and Xeon E5 2678V3 in 18 games using AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card. All technical information about the test setup and all other settings will be available on my technical slides by the end of the video, but still I need to mention a few important details. Intel Core i7-7820X has disgusting Intel toothpaste under its lid, that's why it's almost next to impossible to keep this CPU cool. Even if I use my giant Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler, I'm not able to get the CPU any higher than 4.3 GHz. Noctua NHD15 is enough to keep the CPU cool under gaming conditions, but if I run Ada64 or Prime95 stress test, the CPU is overheating quite fast and the system crashes. I have also got a very weird behavior if I'm trying to use memory at DDR4-3400 speed. I know that my G-Skill modules are capable to work at DDR4-3400, I have tested AM4 platform, I have tested Intel LJ1151 and Intel LJ1200. If I apply 138 voltage to my memory sticks, they are working perfectly fine at DDR4-3400 CL14. Now on this motherboard, X299 from Asus, the motherboard boots and it's kind of working if I run all the benchmarks, no problems, it's working no problem, but then at some moment the system just locks. There is no consequence how I can reproduce this problem, but it just happens. This was super frustrating because a few times I was, okay, so now it's stable and I run multiple games benchmarks and then the system locks. If the system is not stable, I think it's not appropriate to make such benchmarks and report to you that you can achieve such values, that's why I had to go back to DDR4-3200 and redo all the benchmarks which I have already made at that point. Well, it was very frustrating and that's probably why this video is a bit delayed. I originally planned to release it on the previous weekends, but it is what it is, now I'm running out of time and uh, doing what I can do. As usual, let's start looking at the test results with Battlefield 5. Here, at 1080p, Ryzen 5 5600X is 22.2% faster than i7-7820X at 4.3 GHz when it comes to averages and 1% lows. At 1440p, the difference is 15.2% and at 4K we have identical performance. Far Cry New Dawn 1080p, the difference is 23-30%, 1440p, the difference is 6-4%, and, and at 4K or 2160p, the difference grows a little bit again, it's 17-3%. Assassin's Creed Valhalla This game demonstrates almost identical performance between these two CPUs. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is also working pretty much the same with both of the CPUs, the biggest gap I have seen at 4K, at the minimal FPS, Ryzen 5 5600X is 17% faster than i7-7820X. Watch Dogs Legion demonstrates very comparable performance between these two CPUs, the biggest gap at 1080p is 5 and 3%. F1 2019 at 1080p, Ryzen 5 is 22 and 28% faster. At 1440p, Ryzen is faster 18 and 24%, and at 
and 4K difference is 14 and 1%. Dirt Rally 2. At 1080p, Ryzen is 56 and 36% faster, which seems like a giant difference, but it's important to mention that i7-7820X was able to render more than 130 frames per second, which is more than enough even for those who are using 120Hz monitors. At 1440p, the difference is 16 and 1%, and at 4K, there are no difference between these two CPUs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p, Ryzen 5 is 36 and 30% faster, at 1440p it's 18 and 11% faster, and at 4K the difference is negligible. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. At 1080p, Ryzen 5 5600X is again significantly faster, 41 and 57%, but yet again I see no sense in this difference because i7-7820X was able to render more than 300 frames per second. Yes, Ryzen was able to render more than 400 frames per second, but I think this difference is basically irrelevant. At 1440p, Ryzen is still 16 and 24% faster, but i7 is still rendering more than 300 frames per second. At 4K, both of the CPUs are delivering the same performance. Call of Duty Modern Warfare At 1080p, Ryzen is 9 and 10% faster, at 1440p and 4K the difference is negligible. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. At 1080p, Ryzen is 28 and 25% faster, at 1440p the difference is 11 and 6%, and at 4K the difference is 5 and 0%. Basically, there is no difference between these two CPUs. Gears 5. At 1080p, Ryzen is 24% faster by average and minimal FPS, but at 1440p and 4K, Ryzen 5 5600X is a few percent slower than i7-7820X. This is yet again demonstrating that testing games at 720p is absolute nonsense. Horizon Zero Dawn. At 1080p, Ryzen is 19 and 7% faster, at 1440p the difference is just 5%, and at 4K, Ryzen is faster by 4 and 7%. Hitman 2. At 1080p, Ryzen is 13 and 17% faster, at 1440p, i7 is 16 and 10% slower, but at 4K, i7-7820X is taking the lead over Ryzen 5 5600X by 15 and 10%. It's hard for me to tell why at 4K, i7-7820X is taking the lead over Ryzen 5 5600X, maybe it's related to the fact that i7 has 4 memory channels while Ryzen has only 2 memory channels, and at 4K, Hitman 2 decides to render more NPCs or do some extra stuff, which benefits from 4 memory channels. And yes, this is one more of those important examples which prove my point that testing games at 720p is a complete nonsense. Metro Exodus. This game is very well optimized for Intel CPUs and not so well optimized for AMD CPUs. Here, both of the CPUs are demonstrating identical performance, but i7-7820X has slightly better minimal FPS values. Red Dead Redemption 2. This game is also optimized for Intel CPUs and not optimized for AMD CPUs, that's why Ryzen 5 is not able to pull ahead. Still, both of the CPUs are within a margin of error from each other. It's also important to mention that even at 1080p with RX 6800 XT, with maximum balance at preset which I'm using for testing, we are still GPU bound. Mafia 2 Definitive Edition. This is a very old game which is extremely not optimized, it uses only 1.5 CPU cores. Here, at 1080p, Ryzen is 16 and 17% faster, at 1440p it's 21 and 18% faster, and at 4K the difference is 50 and 20%. It's interesting to see that the gap between these two CPUs is growing with the resolution. From 1080p to 1440p and 4K, the difference is growing instead of shrinking. And the last tester game is Digital Combat Simulator. It's also not very well optimized, and at 1080p, Ryzen 5 5600X is 58 and 20% faster than i7 7820X. At 1440p, Ryzen is still 35% faster by the minimal FPS, and at 4K, we have identical performance. Now, let's put it all together and see how i7 7820X stacks against Ryzen 5 5600X at 1080p with RX 6800 XT using these 18 games. When it comes to minimal FPS, Ryzen has beaten i7 by 21%, and averages will be better by 17% with Ryzen 5 CPU.
moving to 1440p and the difference shrinks to 12 and 7% when it comes to minimal and average FPS. At 4K there is basically no difference, but Ryzen is still 6 and 1% faster. The same as last time, when I was testing Xeon E5 2678v3, I have also measured the power consumption of these two systems using F1 2019 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmarks. Under F1 2019 gaming benchmark, i7-7820X system consumed 350 to 370 watts, while the same system with Ryzen 5 5600X consumed only 300 to 320 watts. Seems like the difference is not that big, but you also need to keep in mind that Ryzen was producing better performance than i7. Switching to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and here i7-7820X system consumes 410 to 430 watts, while Ryzen 5 5600X consumes only 300 to 320 watts. The difference is about 100 watts or even 110 watts. Again, this is power consumption of entire system and not just the CPU. But since all other components are identical and both of the systems are delivering basically the same performance, which means that the GPU is loaded about the same, we can assume that at the same conditions and at the same load, i7-7820X overclocked to 4.3 GHz consumes more than 100 watts extra compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Benchmarks and test results is only half of the picture, so let's take a look at AliExpress what you can find for the Intel LJ2066 or X299 platform on AliExpress. If I start a search for X299, I will find a bunch of quite useless items which are basically cooling, but still there are quite a few interesting items. For example, this ASRock X299 mini ITX motherboard is quite interesting, and there are a few other options. I have picked three most relevant options. The first one is MSI X299 SLI Plus motherboard for just 204 euros or almost 205 euros. This is a very decent motherboard with lots of features and usually you can overclock processors using this motherboard pretty decently. The other option is the same MSI motherboard but in OEM version. So it costs just 163 euros, it doesn't look as appealing, but the motherboard is not bad at all. I have tested X99 version of this motherboard, it works with no issues, you can overclock and you can flush the BIOS from MSI SLI Plus motherboard. Of course, in my case I have used BIOS from MSI X99 SLI Plus. For X299, most likely you will have to use BIOS from MSI X299 SLI Plus. For the CPU I have found this one, Intel Core i7-7800X. This is a 10-core 20-thread CPU, thus it will be even more difficult to keep it cool, but it's still a nice CPU. Chinese are asking 215 euros for the CPU, so all in all, for about 400 or 420 euros you can get MSI X299 motherboard and a 10-core Core i9 CPU. Is it worth it? Well, I guess it's up to you to decide. In my opinion, it is not worth it. For this money, around 400 euros, you will be much better with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and a decent B550 motherboard. Still, if you need lots of memory and maybe you need many PCI Express lanes, these Intel Core i7 CPUs and Core i9 CPUs for X299 platform have 40 PCI Express lanes, then X299 platform might be for you. Of course, in the future, when the prices will drop, I will revisit this platform again, and I am looking forward to get some entertainment and some more testing with the X299 Xeons. We'll see how Chinese are going to solve the compatibility issues for the X299 chipset, which is currently not supporting the Xeon CPUs, and other way around, the server-grade motherboards do not support i7 and i9 CPUs. For now though, I guess that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.